Hi all, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jay, and this is episode three of Becoming a Self-Taught Luthier from Scratch. As promised, today we are going to cover radius dishes. I'm going to make two radius dish today, one 15 foot radius and one 30 foot radius. The 15 is going to be for the backs of my guitar, guitars, and the 30 is going to be for the sound boards, the tops of my guitars. I've got all of my wood I bought yesterday, got it all pre-cut at the shop, so it's already 24 inches wide. I'm going to cut those into circles already for the sanding pads so I'm going to buy to put on them. But before we crack into that and get on with it, I'm um, just quickly going to a segment and explain what radius dish actually are and what they're used for in Leaf 3. So what is a radius dish? I'd like you to imagine that we've got a circle and that that circle has got a radius of 15 feet. We're then going to draw a chord, a cross section over a part of the circle at 24 inches long, which is the width of our radius dish that we're making. And that's going to leave us with this arc. We're going to take that arc and imprint that arc onto a flat piece of wood 24 inches in diameter and we're going to put a sanding pad 24 inches wide directly onto the radius face and that's going to leave us with a 15 foot radius dish. So that covers what a radius dish is but more importantly we need to cover why we use radius dish in Luthery. Now this is only research that I've done because I'm just getting into Luke 3, so I'm not a professional. These aren't tried and tested reasons that I have put to the test, because I've never built a guitar. But from the research that I've done, it seems that the main reason that we would use a radius dish is because slightly doming the soundboard and the back gives it greater strength at a lighter weight so without the dome effect because of the string tension we'd have to have a thicker piece of wood. Um, and obviously sonically, that's not gonna be as good. We wanna get that top and back as thin as we can get it with the most amount of strength, which is obviously why we have our bracing, we dome it. Um, this is also why on a classical guitar, typically you have a flat top because nylon strings, classical strings, do not give as much tension as a steel string guitar. So that extra strength on a steel string guitar is necessary. Um, people have said for aesthetic reasons and geometrical reasons, it's more ergonomic, it feels better, it looks better. Sonically, it can benefit the guitar to have a radius in the top and the back, um, which is probably true, but at the end of the day, your bracing patterns and the way you voice the guitar is ultimately going to affect it far more than the radius itself. I've seen people say that uh, it gives the guitar higher resonant frequency and also can offer a touch more sustain. That's up to you to decide. I'd also like to go over why we use different radius. Um, so why the top of the guitar is gonna have um, a shallower radius and why the back is gonna have a tighter radius. And that's because, or I've seen online that people have claimed that the back tends to sink in over time uh, for various reasons because it's perhaps uh, got less bracing on it. Um, so with a tighter radius that allows for the sinkage and it not to end up concave, so it's still convex or flat or whatever. And the top needs to be less convex. We have a slightly less uh, tight radius on the top because it's easier to glue a bridge down. If you've got a domed, really domed top, it's going to be more difficult to successfully glue a bridge down and get a nice hold. And uh, as well as where the fingerboard meets the guitar, um, it's going to glue on and meet there. Geometrically, it's going to be better with a slightly less tight radius, a shallower radius. And some people even do not radius the top of the top. Uh, where the, the fingerboard meets the guitar, that's not ready. Some people will keep that flat where you have the transverse brace there. So that's why we use radius dishes. Let's get back to the build.
whilst I quickly do this glue up, I'm going to glue two of these together. So I've got a nice thick radius dish. I probably could have gone with slightly less than 18 mil. I think maybe 12 mil probably would have cut it. Um, but this is fine, it doesn't bother me. I'd rather have a nice thick radius dish. Um, I'm just gonna explain the process I went through to try and get them like this, to be able to cut a perfect circle whilst I do the glue up. So I've centered the pieces of wood that I had, drilled a center mark. Now, I could have used a metal rod or something. I didn't have anything. I had this pencil. I had a drill bit the same size as the pencil and it works really well. So that worked for me. You can use whatever you'd like. As long as it's cylindrical, you've got a drill bit the same size, it's gonna work perfectly fine. Right, so I have my center point. Just gonna move this over here. Find the center point of a square, just join the corners, pretty self-explanatory. And then I got another length of MDF, centered the wood again, put it down onto my part there. And then before I attached my router, when this was a square, I just scored a line where it meets the edge, drilled a hole along that line, in the center and that gives me the radius or the edge of the cutting tool at the radius that I'd like. Just to note, find the right way to turn your router. I'm not 100% certain because I'm not a professional, but when I was turning anti-clockwise, the router would jump because it was pulling the same direction. Whereas when I went against the direction of the wood, it cut much better and there was no jumps. So that seem safer. If anybody knows more, please let us know in the comments. Unfortunately, these are the only clamps I own, and they're not even mine, they're my dad's. So, I can't rely on clamps under pressure, I've not got the money to go out and buy tons of clamps, so I'm just going to try and get as much weight on this as I possibly can. that's enough. Don't ask about this. This is a log I wanted to have a go at splitting by hand with wedges which kind of worked but it was a lot of work. <laughs> right come back in a couple of hours. Okay everything's nice and dry. Everything's nice and dry and ready for the next step. So now I need to move on to making my rails which has already got the arc of the radius of the circle cut into those rails so I can put my router on it and use that to imprint that radius or that arc 
onto my radius ditch. I'm not going to slow this part down and explain everything. I've got lots of calculations here that I've done this morning to figure out my radius or my arc. And I've got another set, another um, way of drawing it out as a template onto a piece of wood for me to cut. If you'd like an in-depth video about that, let me know in the comments because I could plan a video in the future that goes into how we get the radius from a set of information like, um, sorry, how we get the arc from a set of information like the radius and the chord, which is just a cross section through part of the circle where you want your arc. If you'd like that, let me know and I can do a whole video on that, that's fine. But for this, I'm just gonna speed through this and get on with it and build it. Enjoy. So we now have our templates, 15 foot and a 30 foot template. I'm going to keep them forever. These are going to be used to make my rails for my router sled so I can use those to imprint it onto my dishes. Right, onto making the rails. desperately need to sort out some kind of dust extraction otherwise my lungs are a write-off okay it's been a couple of days since i've done anything in here i had to sort my mot out and i've got that all sorted now so i can get back to what i'm doing we have our rails cut 15 foot rails 30 foot rails for our radius dish. 
off camera, I just had to cut the rails down because the cutting piece wasn't deep enough to start the cut. And I've made an absolutely atrocious job of it, all wavy and horrible, because I don't have a bandsaw or a table saw. So I was using hand tools and I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. So, but it doesn't matter because I don't care about the bottom. I'm gonna build these rails into a jig so the router can go on the top. The radius is still fine on both of them, so it doesn't matter in the slightest that I've done that. I was waiting for something to go wrong anyway. So next, I need to cut a square piece of MDF, drill a centre hole. I've got some ball bearings, which I'm gonna drill some holes in that piece of MDF so that I can make a jig where the radius dish sits on top of the ball bearings with the pencil I was using through the center points that I can get nice uh, circular turns, movement, so the router can do its work. So let's get on with that.
Okay, so we have the rails all made up. And so the router is trapped in that space, can't go anywhere else. So that is exactly where it's going to cut. Let's get it so it's just skimming the edge because I don't want to go too deep. I want to go only as deep as I need to go. So we're just going to touch the edge and then it's going to obviously get deeper as we go in. For all intents and purposes, we're ready to start routing the radius. I didn't realize that you can attach a Henry Hoover to the dust collector on the router. So I bodged up a little thing there so I can do dust collection because it's gonna be a filthy job and I do not want to ruin my lungs. <laughs> I try to actually be able to breathe because I can't buy a new set of lungs. I can buy a new Henry Hoover. You probably can buy a new set of lungs, but I don't have the money for those either. So this is perfect. to mention I've never ever made any kind of jigs or anything prior to this video I have very basic woodworking skills you know draw a line chop there it's that long that's as far as my woodworking experience has gone so needless to say I'm quite proud of myself I'm just going to get some sandpaper and just give a light rub over it because there's a couple tool marks I need to mention I'm not doing a lot of sand in here, I don't want to change the radius, I just want to take those tool marks out. Okay, and that brings us to the end of our video. Um, I have made my 30 inch radius dish off camera because it's the same process, just repeated, and nobody needs to see that. I just want to go over a couple of things. Uh, firstly, this makes an incredible amount of MDF dust, which is awful stuff. It's really bad for you. It's not gonna be good for your lungs, which is why I got my Henry Hoover out and tried to make as much, make as best of it as I could and uh, clean as I went. Um, it's up to you to take your health and safety in your own hands and make sure you're doing what's best for you. Ideally, I would have better dust collection but you know, I'm, I'm working with what I've got here. So just remember to take that into account if you are doing this, because it is very messy work. My PP going forward is definitely going to do, uh, need some upgrading. Um, I'm looking to buy some ear defenders and a proper respirator so I can do everything nice and safely without putting myself at risk. So I'm quite pleased. I'm pleased with what I've done. Um, like I said in the last, um, in, in, in a portion of the video, I've never made any jigs. I've never made 
anything this in depth. My woodworking experience up until now has really been measure and cut. You know, it's not this in depth. So I'm, I'm pleased with what's happened. I'm, I'm happy with my radius dish. Um, obviously, where they are self-made and homemade, there probably are very slight imperfections in the radius dishes. So one that you might get made on a CNC is probably slightly more accurate than what I have created. But what I have created is going to be consistent in the guitars that I create. So I have those rails that's created these radius dish and these radius dish will create that radius for the guitars that I use, uh, the guitars that I make. And that is gonna be consistent because I'll be using the same radius dish. As for this part of the build, this part of the jig, um, this works really well uh, with the centre point and a base, um, some little steel ball bearings, I think those were 9mm steel ball bearings, um, and I used, I only had a 12mm bit for this, for this drill bit, which worked fine, and because of the guide, the little point at the, the top of it, it actually created a little divot underneath the hole that the balls actually sit in really well so it actually works perfectly just remember to tape off a um a depth so that all of your holes are a consistent depth because if they're not your dish isn't going to be level and the radius that you end up cutting into it is not going to be correct it's going to be slightly off so just to mention make sure that you do that if you are going to do this and that's ultimately it. Um, as I say, I'm very happy with what's happened. Um, I've not got the sanding pads for them yet because um, they're quite expensive and I don't need to use them right now. Obviously, this is becoming a self-taught luthier. This isn't building an acoustic guitar, so I'm not necessarily doing everything in chronological order. I'm more trying to build up the workshop so that I can consistently build guitars. You know, not just one guitar, I want to be able to build guitars consistently and replicate those things over and over again, which is why I'm doing this. So there's going to be a lot more duke building, there's going to be a lot more homemade tool building, probably more so than there is guitar building to begin with, but that is, in essence, what it's going to take to become a self-taught luthier in my own space. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you've gained something from it. I hope it's given you some kind of a depth and insight um, and if you are looking to do this yourself I hope that you can gain a lot of experience to sort of crack on with this and, and make your own radius dish. As always I'm new to everything, these are all new journeys to me, video making, editing, the in-depth woodwork so any comments, suggestions, anything that could just make anything better, streamlined, better for your viewership just let us know in the comments. I would always love to hear what you've got to say. Please remember to like and subscribe. Follow my Instagram account that I've just made, a new Instagram account. I'll put that in the description. Have a good day. Take care of yourselves.